Welcome back to another episode of Practical Nutrition. I'm Sarah. I'm Cassie. And I'm Alex. And today we are talking about all things milk. So we, people ask us this all the time, you know, is almond milk healthier than cow's milk? Is cow's milk bad for you? We're not really going to get into the nitty gritty details of should you be doing this or should you be doing that? We're going to just kind of give you guys information on cow's milk versus milk alternatives. And of course, if you have any more in-depth questions about them, feel free to send us a message. And to be honest, we'll probably do a podcast specifically about dairy and a lot of questions that we get about that um, specifically too. So stay tuned for that. Um, but let's talk about cow's milk. Um, so not too long ago, the only thing you really could drown your cereal in was whole cow's milk. Um, I remember doing that when I was a kid. It was just normal milk and that was that. And now we have so many different options. Um, and now even with normal milk, there's 2%, 1% skim, lactose-free milk. Um, I'm going to list some milk alternatives. And ev I was even surprised when I was looking up all the options. I was like, this is an option. <laughs> so here we go. Soy, pea, hemp flaxseed, oat, coconut, rice, almond, cashew, peanut, banana, macadamia, pistachio, hazelnut, pecan, buckwheat, chia, and quinoa, just to name a few. <laughs> I didn't know banana. Milk. I know, neither yeah, did I. I've never heard I didn't that. either. The reason for that is because it's sweet, so a lot of the times yeah. the banana milk doesn't have added sugar in it, just mm. the sweetness from the banana. Fun mm. fact. Um, so I have never bought it, never tried it, probably never will, but that's okay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so um, let's talk statistics again. So in 2018, a statistic revealed that almost one half of Americans consume plant-based milks, including 68% of parents and 54% of people younger than 18, um, which is surprising. That's a lot of people that consider themselves plant milk drinkers. Um, and each type of milk has its own pros and cons, which is kind of what we'll talk about today. And that's really dependent on a person's diet, their health, their nutritional needs, and their taste preferences. Um, so today we're just going to really give you the 411 on cow's milk and milk alternatives and some of our recommendations, things to look out for. Um, but first, we're going to take you through milk throughout the years. So did you know that dairy milk sales have actually decreased um, in the past six years? So they decreased by 7% in 2015, which was about $17.5 billion and around another 11% in 2020. Um, and in 2013, dairy milk dominated the market share at 90.5%, while plant-based milks just held 8.9%. And that has changed drastically since then. Um, additionally, succeeding generations of Americans have actually consumed less milk than their preceding generations, reflected mainly in changes in frequency of consumption. I remember growing up, we always had a glass of milk at the table, and that doesn't really happen for me too much anymore. So mm -hmm. I've seen that in my own life, and I'm sure you guys have too. Um, also, between the 1970s and 2000s, people have become less likely to drink milk at mealtimes, especially at lunch and dinner, which is kind of what I just talked about. And last but not least, since 1970 per capita, milk consumption has fallen from 0 0.96 cups per day as an average to between one half and two thirds of a cup daily per person. Um, so that's interesting. And that's not really surprising to me based on the health trends and the health market and all of the dairy free options and their own sections now in grocery stores. So um, let's kind of dive into the nutritional profile of milk. So Alex is going to do that for us. Yes, absolutely. And I was just thinking about this. I'm wondering too, if it's like which part of the country you're in, whether your cow's yeah. milk consumption would be higher oh, than yeah. other places. It's just, I don't know, something yep. to think about. I feel like Midwest, we drink a lot more milk, yeah. <laughs> you know, <Probably. laughs> compared to other places. So I'd be interested to see that. Mm -hmm. um, but back to the nutritional profile of cow's milk. So this is whole milk per cup. So there's differences in whole milk, 2%, 1% skim. It's all based on fat content. So for whole milk, 150 calories per cup, which is pretty calorie dense because it's whole fat. Uh, 12 grams of carbs, carbohydrates, so that lactose, 8 grams of fat, and 8 grams of protein. Other cow's milk has the same amount of carbs and protein, but the fat differentiates from there. So I feel like that's kind of a misconception is that people think that it's a way different milk, but it's really just the fat content that's different, but you're getting the same amount of carbs and protein. So 1% milk contains less calories at around 110 calories per cup, and then skim milk's down from there at about 80 calories per cup. Fat-free milk is significantly lower in calories than whole milk. However, the removal of fat decreases 
the amount of certain nutrients in the milk, including vitamin E, which is a powerful antioxidant, and vitamin K, which is good for blood clotting and bone metabolism. So milk is made of 20% whey, which is absorbed more quickly, and 80% casein, which is slow digesting. Both contain all nine essential amino acids in our high quality, AKA complete protein. So remember essential amino acids are ones that we have to eat. Um, we have to get through food and drink, and that's a good thing about milk is that it contains all nine essential amino acids if you're doing cow's milk. So a fun fact, with eight grams of protein per cup, this is around 60% of the RDA for toddlers and 40% of the RDA for children. So great as you are aging, um, as you're getting older from a young age on, milk's a great source of protein. Yes, now you know all things about the nutritional profile of milk. Yes. <laughs> so More Cass than you wanted I, to know. I, I yeah. know. Yeah, probably. <laughs> we typically do that. Um, but Cassie's going to take us into kind of the pros and the cons of cow's milk. And there's much more than we have listed here, but just generally that's what we're going to talk about. Yes, and this is good because a lot of people think we are going to side either pro-dairy or anti-dairy. And and really, um, again, like a lot of things that, that we say is it really depends. And there are a lot of health benefits that we'll talk about with milk. It can provide a lot of things, but you don't need to drink it to be healthy. So, so it's kind of one of those things that it really depends on your likes and tastes and what your goals are and if you want to fit that in or whatever. So... Some of the pros of cow's milk include that it can provide essential proteins and extra calories from fat, and sometimes that's something that people need. And typically the main source of calcium for Americans is from dairy products. And so that can be an important nutrient for a lot of people's bone health as well. It contains fatty acids, carbohydrates, minerals, fat soluble vitamins, and B vitamins. So there are a lot of good stuff in there um, that you can take. And a lot of people will have that consistently if they're milk drinkers. So that's something that they may get on a consistent basis as well. And the calcium in cow's milk is highly bioavailable. So it's easier for your body to absorb and utilize than from some other sources. According to the protein digestibility corrected amino acid score, that's a method of measuring protein quality based on availability of essential amino acids as well as digestibility. Cow's milk provides higher quality protein than beef or soy. So it's a really healthy protein source. Some proteins have biological activities including enzymes, immunoglobulins, bactericides, hormones, mediators, and growth factors. Lactose-free versions are available for people who have lactose intolerance, and those aren't any different than dairy milk as far as the nutrients that they provide. They just have a lactase enzyme added, so that way you can digest them and not feel horrible after you drink milk. And, um, and it's also been called the gold standard beverage because of its nutrient profile. So there are a lot of good things in there. Some of the cons of cow's milk include that it can be high in calories and fat if you're consuming whole milk. And sometimes people don't um, really look at what they're drinking as far as calories go. So, um, and often drinks that contain dairy might also contain some other sugar or calories. So you just have to be sure that you're accounting for the calories that you're getting from your milk beverages. And uh, many people are intolerant to lactose, which is the milk sugar. And sometimes this is confusing on the label because you'll see in milk, even though it's unsweetened, it will list sugars on there, but those are natural sugars from lactose. And so um, that's what people sometimes don't tolerate well when they're drinking milk. Some people also have ethical concerns about modern dairy farm, farming practices. And so um, there are a lot of options for that. You can look for organic or, and if you have any questions about those kinds of things, we can answer those as well. Um, but that's something to consider. And the hormones maybe that they're adding, um, cancer risk in relation to cardiovascular diseases as well. Those may be other reasons that people are not wanting to do dairy. And there definitely are some things to think about there. Which is a whole other topic in and of itself, yes. too. Yeah. But again, if y'all have questions about that, feel free to send those our way. Um, I think that milk is a lot more nutritionally dense than people probably think, too, because of all of the vitamins and minerals that it contains. So you didn't know, now you know. Um, so let's talk about milk alternatives. So I'm going to kind of introduce that with how they're made because how would you get milk from a nut or from soy, right? Um, well, it's not exactly that you're milking the almonds. It's, it's not. It's crazy. They don't have udders. 
<laughs> but they're manufactured by extracting the plant material such as soy, almonds, and rice in water. Um, so that gives it the liquid consistency. And plant materials are homogenized and thermally treated to improve the liquid suspension of the particles and increase the shelf life. And they are specifically made to resemble cow's milk in appearance. So that's why they're all that white color and maybe a little bit of a grainy if you have like a nut-based one. Um, so that's how they're made. Alex is going to take us into the pros and cons of milk alternatives. Again, not exclusive list, but just some general things for you guys to, to know. Yes, absolutely. So we're going to start with the pros of milk alternatives. So no lactose. Uh, for those that suffer from lactose intolerance and lack lactase, um, which is that enzyme that breaks down lactose, um, it's a great option. So if you're somebody who does suffer from lactose intolerance, a milk alternative would be a good option and a good substitute. Um, there's varying fat and calorie content, so depending on your goals, that can be beneficial if you're looking for a lower calorie milk alternative, and there's lots of different options for that. Um, many are fortified with iron, which is maybe something that you didn't know. Um, so if you're anemic or something like that, you could get some iron from those milk alternatives. And then some, like I mentioned earlier, are lower calories. So if you're looking for a lower calorie option, then that would putting like an almond milk on your cereal would be a lower calorie way to do that and a milk alternative. Cons of milk alternatives, lower levels of calcium without fortification, so they lack that enrichment, aka adding micronutrients back into your food. Um, same lower levels of vitamin D without fortification, and these are the cons of milk alternatives. Um, even with fortification compared to cow's milk, the bioavailability, which Cassie talked about earlier, which is the extent or rate that the nutrient reaches its biological destination and how quickly we can utilize it. Um, looking at calcium and vitamin D, it's uncertain in milk alternatives. Um, research has shown, like I mentioned, the bioavailability of calcium varies significantly in fortified beverages. Both legumes and grains, which are the basis of many plant-based milks, contain high amounts of phytic acid, which is a compound that binds strongly to nutritionally essential minerals and trace elements, so like calcium, iron, magnesium, and zinc, for example, and they can impair that bioavailability, so how we use those minerals can be affected by that phytic acid. So it's kind of like a catch-22. Uh, most are lower in protein. Uh, so if you didn't know, something like almond milk is not going to have much protein. I think it only has about two grams compared to a cow's milk, which we mentioned earlier. Um, the almonds are roasted and grinding before blending them with a high volume of water and other ingredients. The solute is filtered away with much of the almonds, protein, and fiber. So if you eat an almond, it's going to have a different nutritional value than almond milk. Um, and then also cons of Milk alternatives that added sugar, so a lot of times it can get sweetened versus unsweetened. Sweetened ones are going to have more added sugar than unsweetened. Um, and then nut and soy allergies. If you've got a dairy allergy and a nut and soy allergy, then it's much harder to maybe find something that is similar to a cow's milk because a lot of that is made out of nuts and soy. Banana milk. Banana, banana milk. milk. <laughs> yes. There's your answer, banana milk. That's hilarious. Good luck. Good job, bananas. <laughs> All right, so now you've got all the information on milk alternatives in terms of pros and cons. So let's talk about why you might choose to use a milk alternative because they definitely have their place. That's why they're being sold on the market, right? Um, and so first and foremost, the most common medical reason for avoiding a cow's milk among infants and children is due to a milk allergy. So that's something serious. You cannot have milk um, because you are allergic to it and you will have an allergic response, which we don't want. Approximately 2.2% to 3.5% of all infants are allergic to cow's milk because of its protein. Uh, through recent studies conducted on a large scale, they demonstrated that 35% of these infants actually outgrow their allergy towards milk by the age of 5 to 6, and that actually may further increase to 80% by the time they reach the age of 16. So it is common for infants and toddlers to outgrow um, those allergies. So you may not be stuck with it forever, which is a good thing because we don't want to have to restrict things if we don't have to. Um, and then additionally is lactose intolerance. We've mentioned um, already throughout this podcast but after infancy, approximately 65% of the human population does have a reduced ability to digest lactose, which is that milk sugar. Lactose intolerance in adulthood is more prevalent in people of East Asian descent, affecting more than 90% of adults in these communities. However, it's also common in people of West African, Arab, Jewish, Greek, and Italian descent. 
Um, so if you are of a certain ethnicity, then you may be more apt to develop lactose intolerance, um, which is an interesting thing to know. And so if you are, then you have lactose intolerance, then it makes sense. Um, additionally, dietary preferences such as being vegan or vegetarian may lead you to choose milk alternatives because you're avoiding dairy. Um, and so somewhere around 6% of the population across the United States considers themselves to be vegetarians and 3% consider themselves to be vegan. And definitely these statistics are expected to rise, especially among young and diverse consumer groups. Uh, two more reasons. You may view them as more nutritious than dairy milk, which we gave you the information of, how, of milk's nutritional profile, which it is a very nutritionally dense thing to consume. Remember, that's the first thing it's that you know animals, when they're born, that's the only thing that they drink, so it's meant to provide them with all the nutrition that they need. Um, but some do have the perception that plant-based milks are more heart healthy and better for weight loss, although there's no really consistent research to support these claims. Um, so if you are someone that does use milk alternatives for that reason, I would encourage you to reach out to one of us or a dietitian um, and, and make sure that you're getting all of the things that you may be missing out on if you're not consuming dairy products or um, if, you, if you don't get a lot of nutrition throughout the rest of your food that you eat in a day. Um, like Cassie said, just because you don't consume milk doesn't mean that you can't get all the things that you need, absolutely. Um, so the last thing here is environmental concerns. Um, this is definitely a real reason for why people choose to use milk alternatives. So avoiding dairy and meat has been called the single biggest way to reduce the environmental impact on the planet, according to scientists behind a comprehensive analysis on the impact of farming. So research shows that while farm livestock provides just 18% of calories and 37% of protein in the food supply, it uses the vast majority of 83% of farmland and produces 60% of agriculture's greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so obviously choosing something that that's plant-based will be much lower than that um, because of the farmland and the livestock and the greenhouse gases and all of that stuff. Um, and that honestly is a whole nother topic in and of itself as well. So much information. Um, okay, so Alex, tell us what to look for in milk alternatives and what to avoid. Yes, so if you are gonna pick a milk alternative, here's kind of a list of what to look for. So seven to eight grams of protein per serving. So you want to make sure you are getting some protein in those milk alternatives if possible. And if you're not, then you need to make sure that your plate is balanced with other protein sources. As few ingredients as possible. Sometimes it can be pumped with tons of ingredients, so check the label. Make sure it's not adding tons of different things that you don't necessarily need. Um, the word unsweetened and zero grams added sugar, you want to look for that. If it shows sweetened, it can sometimes be really high in sugar. So just be sure that it says unsweetened or zero grams added sugar. Limited in saturated fat, especially ones made with coconut or added protein. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not doing tons of saturated fat. We do need a little bit, but not a ton. Uh, not too much sodium, which is something that you may not know. Um, it can be packed with lots of salt. So you want to look for less than 140 milligrams of sodium per cup. You want to have fortification with calcium and, calcium and vitamin D. So again, if it's a milk alternative, they've got to fortify it. So you want to make sure that it has that fortification in there. Additional nutrients you're personally concerned about, just be an educated consumer. Check the label. If you're unsure, ask us. Uh, we can analyze it for you make sure that you're getting all your needs and that you're not consuming things that are too high in sugar too high in fat or too high in sodium so what to avoid in milk alternatives the word sweetened and added sugar so sweetened vanilla almond milk for example has 13 grams added sugar compared to the unsweetened brand which would be zero grams for one cup so sweetened versus unsweetened, 13 grams of added sugar is the difference. So That's something, a lot. Yeah, it is. <laughs> That's a it lot. is. So something to think about there. Uh, barista blends. So these are good for frothing, but usually contain lots of added sugar. So that's something, again, to be aware of. Also, it's important to be aware of additives such as carrageenan and vegetable gums, which are th thickening agents, um, preservatives, and they can have adverse effects in large amounts. Yeah. So all good things. Yes. Um, we'll probably include that in a list in the comments. That way you can just take a screenshot of it next time you go to the grocery store. Then there you have it. You can look for it. <laughs> um, all right, Cassie, what are the best milk alternatives to yes. have? 
Those are typically unsweetened soy or pea-based blends that are fortified with calcium and vitamin D. So you're getting similar nutrients than you would get with cow's milk. So, um, and that's what you want to look for. Like Alex mentioned earlier about the almond milk, um, there is very little protein. A lot of people will replace their milk or dairy with almond milk thinking they're getting protein, but they're not. So just think about the soy milk and pea milk to be your best protein choices. Um, I think I don't think the companies that make almond milk will tell you how many almonds they use per um, container. I think, I mean, because I've tried to look that information mm-hmm. up and you can't really hmm. find that anywhere, but it's estimated to be like five. <laughs> So based really? on nutrition what? facts, I and didn't so, know that. And when I make my own almond milk at mm-hmm. home, I'll use a cup of almonds for four cups of water. So, um, but that's not what they do in the right. you know, and it looks very different. Hmm. Um, it doesn't have any thickeners added. It's really thick when you make it at home. So, mm-hmm. so I, I definitely know they aren't putting that much in there. So you're getting a lot, yeah. kind of like vitamin water with a few almonds. <laughs> <laughs> so, so just which is fine, and it tastes good. And it can, you know, as far as uh, making something taste good, but you're not, you may not be getting as much of a nutritional benefit as you think you are. So, um, so soy milk, we'll talk about first. Um, that's most nutritionally similar to dairy milk, and it's made by soaking and blending soybeans and straining out the leftover pulp. Per cup, it has 80 calories, 8 grams of plant-based protein from soybeans. And with our other podcasts about menopause, that might be something that you're mm-hmm. interested in. Um, and it's filled with antioxidants, fiber, and polyunsaturated fats. Brand recommendations, this is the what this is the one that I drink personally, but it's the one that Sarah picked as well, the mm-hmm. Silk Organic Unsweetened Soy Milk. And so um, it's really good and tasty. I think it tastes amazing. Um, and so that one is really good. Also, pea milk is another one that is a healthy choice. It's made from pea protein isolate, water, and other emulsifiers like algal oil, sunflower oil, and guar and gel, gel and gums. It has a less nutty taste than soy milk has, and soy milk doesn't taste like edamame, really, I don't think, but it's, it just it has a little sweeter taste, but there is a little bit of a nutty taste in there as well. And per cup, it has 70 calories, eight grams of protein, which is awesome, and the use of algal oil provides DHA, which is an omega-3 fatty acid with cardioprotective and cognitive enhancement properties, just like what you would get from salmon, something similar. So a gram recommendation for that is ripple unsweetened pea milk, which is also very tasty. Yeah. So um, so those are both good choices. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so let's talk about the bottom line, uh, just as a conclusion. So we gave you all the nutritional um, elements in milk, and it is a great source of vitamins, minerals, protein, carbs, and fat. It also contains high quality protein with all nine essential amino acids, which is harder to, to get in plant-based things, but it's not impossible. And the calcium, vitamin D, phosphorus, and magnesium found in milk can be very beneficial for bone health. Uh, There are many milk alternatives available for those who can't or choose not to drink milk. We just encourage you to speak with a dietitian to determine the nutritional benefits associated with consuming or choosing not to consume milk. And if you do choose to consume a milk alternative, really encourage you to read the labels. Um, They can certainly be very processed. Uh, If you you aren't familiar with, again, how that's made, right, there's a lot of processing that goes into that versus um, with cow's milk. And so just, um, just know that the nutritional properties depend on the plant source, the processing, and the fortification. Um, If you didn't know this too, a lot of the vitamins and minerals will settle at the bottom of plant-based milk. So before you drink it, shake it a couple times so that they get dispersed throughout and you you actually get them because we we want those. Um, And then consider the additives in the ingredient list that we already mentioned as well. So that wraps us up with our milk versus milk alternatives topic. Um, Like I said, we'll probably go into a little bit more detail on concerns around milk um, and, and things like that. So, but if you have any more questions, feel free to send us a message. If you are someone who is interested in consuming more milk alternatives and avoiding uh, cow's milk, set up a free nutrition consult with us. It's 30 minutes, super quick, and we can make sure that you're getting all the things that you need. So uh, that's about it. That wraps us up. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.